A lot of you ask me, is this realistic? So I look at everything through the lens of my life, my former life, being in that life. So as far as the realism of this, this is what I commented about. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. Everything is very blessed, great on this end. And as always, we give God all the praise, honor, glory, and thanksgiving for that. Today, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna continue with Tulsa King. You know, I've watched episode two, and before we get into it, let me make something very clear because I got some messages when we did, you know, the review of the first episode, and I wanna clarify something. I love anything that Stallone does. I think the only thing that Sly did that I didn't care for too much was Judge Dredd. He probably didn't care for it that much either, you know? Every great star has a movie or two or some, you know, project that they got involved in that they're not crazy about. Whatever, but I'm a big fan of Stallone's. I love everything that he does. He's a terrific actor, uh, and he's great. And Dominic Lombardozzi, he's a friend. Love everything that he does. He's great in this one, too. A lot of the guys, the great, great people involved. You know, Terrence Winter is a great writer. They got a great, great, great team on this project. Now, having said that, a lot of you ask me, is this realistic? So I look at everything through the lens of my life, my former life, being in that life. So as far as the realism of this, this is what I commented about. But listen, this is entertainment. Watch the show. You like Stallone. He's in just about every scene. You're going to enjoy it. Watch the show. It's purely entertaining. You know, when these projects come in front of a studio or a network, they're always looking for a different take on a story that's been done already. A lot of mob stories have been done already. So this was the different take that they had Pure entertainment. It's fictional. It's no basis in, in reality. They put him in Oklahoma, Tulsa for a reason. It's a different take. And you got to do that when you approach the studios. Otherwise, they say, oh, it's been done again. I don't agree with that. To me, a good story is a good story. It doesn't matter. How many love stories have there been? How many science fiction stories have there been? They're all pretty much the same when you break it down, but that's how the studios, the networks look at it. So again, watch the show. It's entertaining. But as far as realistic, that's what we're gonna talk about. Okay, now one thing I wanna clarify also. I had said that Stallone, one of the things that wasn't realistic about this is that Stallone gets out of prison. He immediately goes back to meet with his former guys. He doesn't check into any parole or probation officer. And somebody commented, Michael, well, listen, if he does his whole term, he doesn't have to report. That's not true in most cases in the federal system under the new law. Just about everybody has supervised release for a period of time. They want to know when you're released from prison, after you've done it all, they want you to report a little bit. Not in every case, but in most cases. And that's what I looked at here. So normally, he wouldn't go right back into the, you know, the lion's den, so to speak, and meet with all the guys first thing he gets out of prison. That's not normal. It's not, you know, 100% fact what I'm saying, but I looked at it through that lens. So maybe he didn't, maybe he didn't have any supervised release, whatever. It's not a big deal, but that's how I looked at it. But let me go to the, something that's really important in this episode. If you remember in episode one, he punched a made guy. Knocked him out, okay? Knocked him out. Punched a made guy. Well, in this episode, that guy who had his jaw broken, I think, in three places, goes to Dominic Lombardozzi, who's uh, second in command, his father's the boss, and he says, I want him killed. That's it. I'm a made guy. You know the rules. This is not supposed to happen. Now, what Lombardozzi says at this time, he calls up Stallone and tells him, you got a problem and you got to solve this. And Stallone says, well, what do you mean? He deserved it. I did you a favor. And uh, Lombardozzi says to him, look, $100,000 will make this go away. Now, let me comment on that. The night I got made, and any time ever before that, there's certain things that are just against the rules that you cannot do and you cannot get away with. Number one, you can't violate another made man's wife, daughter, sister, niece, anything like that. That will get you killed in most cases. Number two, you can't hit another made guy. 
If you're not a made guy, you can't hit him, you're gone. But if you are a made guy, you can't raise your hands to another made guy. I'll tell you this, even if you're a, a, a cop regime or you're a consigliere, an underboss, or even the boss is not allowed to raise his hands even to a soldier. And let me tell you something. Now, if a boss hit a soldier, would he get away with it? Probably, for the moment. But I'll tell you what, the guys will not like it, and they'll remember it, and they'll talk about it. And they'll say, he raised his hands. You're not supposed to do that, no matter what position you're in. And I'll tell you this, if a boss does that to a, a made guy of any stature, whether he be a soldier or a capo, people are going to remember that. And in the long run, it's not going to work well for him. I'm telling you that. You can't engage in that kind of behavior, it'll catch up with you. In this case here, even if Stallone would come up with a hundred grand and pay this guy off, it wouldn't bode well for his future because if he makes a mistake a second time, they're gonna remember that he hit the guy the first time. And the guy that accepts the hundred grand, it's not gonna look good for him either. So this is a bad thing. Now, is Stallone gonna get whacked? I doubt it, he's the star of the show, he can't in this place. But in reality, it wouldn't work well for him. Now, if you remember this, Remember, and Sammy spoke about this, I'm not talking out of school, Sammy was originally with the Columbos, and then something happened. He got himself in trouble with another guy in the Columbos, and he was in real trouble. He said it, he might have gotten killed, but somebody from the Gambino family spoke up for him, and they took him away from the Columbos and put him in the Gambinos, and that's what saved his life. Remember that, so these are very serious things. So as far as that part of the show, for me, it's not really realistic. He probably wouldn't have walked out of that room if he hit that made guy. That would have been it. He wouldn't have lasted a couple of days. It would have been over. That's my opinion. Could there have been, like I said, you know, maybe an extenuating circumstance? I doubt it, but it could have happened. The life is so intriguing. If you're seeing how, how Stallone is navigating things, now he's out in Tulsa and he's trying to build his crew and he walks right in and he starts immediately shaking people down and he's extorting them and so on and so forth. But one of the things that came up here that I liked, Stallone was actually a very good negotiator. And let me tell you something, you're in that life, you gotta be a good negotiator. So when he sat down with certain people, there's a scene there that he sat down with the guy that has this big cannabis business and the guy proposes a deal to him and Stallone stops him and says, no, this is the way it's going to be. And he changes the deal. I'm not going to get into the particulars, but he has leverage over the guy and he uses his dominating personality and he uses the life that people know he was about. And he says, this is the deal. This is the way it's going to be. And the guy accepts it, shakes his hand, brings back to mind when I was in the gas business and I first met with my Russian guys and we were going to go into partnership. And they said, Michael, we want to do 50-50. And I said, no, we're not going to do 50-50. It's going to be 75% me, 25% you. And there were three Russians involved, and they looked at me and they said, you know, Mr. Michael, we don't see that as being fair. And I said, no, that's very fair. And they said, why? I said, because we're all on the street. You're going to rob from me a little bit, so this way I won't feel too bad because I know I'm getting the lion's share. I said, but don't let me catch you anyway. And they turned around, I'll never forget, and they talked among each other for a minute, and they turned around and said, you got a deal, we shook hands. You know, so that part was realistic. You know, normally when you're dealing from that perspective, when you're dealing from that lifestyle, you have a little bit of leverage because people know who you are. You know what, people? People said all the time, Michael, what a brilliant businessman you are. Look, I wasn't a brilliant businessman. I had some talents that helped me, you know, succeed in that business. We don't have to get into that. It's not about me now. But one thing I did know how to use very well, I knew how to use the aura and the spectrum of that life to benefit me in business. And if you do it right, you don't have to be bulldozing people. You don't have to be extorting people. If you do it right and you use it the right way, okay, you can go far. And I was able to do that. And that's why part of the reason for my success. You know, the funny thing here was when, you know, Stallone's trying, after 25 years in prison, he's trying to readjust, you know, get back into society. He goes to FedEx. He wants to send a FedEx package back and he's going to pay him in cash. And the guy says, well, sorry, we don't accept cash. Cashless society had to have a credit card. Well, he didn't have a credit card. He didn't even have an ID. His license was like 27 years old. So now he has to go through the process, uh, through the process rather, of getting a license and getting a permit. And it's just funny. He goes to the bank to try to open up an account. He can't do that. Just a lot of things, you know. So, you know, as he's assimilating himself back into society, you see some of the things that he's going through. Uh, and, and it's funny. 
And then they start to bring another element. The plot starts to get a little bit bigger in that there's a guy, you know, wearing a cowboy hat. You know, he's in, uh, I don't know what he is, he's a rancher, it seems. And he finds out that Stallone is back in town. Uh, well, in town. I don't know if he ever went there before. But for some reason, or obviously, this guy had a problem with Stallone at one point in his life. It had to be more than 25 years ago. And he thinks Stallone is out there to kill him. So we don't know where that develops yet. But now this guy is kind of keeping tabs on Stallone, Stallone. So we see the plot starting to widen a little bit. And it's getting a little bit more interesting in that regard. And then we see something else come into this. Now we know that um, he has a daughter, Tina, my mother, my sister, my daughter, a name that's very familiar to me. But his daughter's name is Tina in the show. You can see that anytime her name is mentioned, obviously it gets to him. And there is a scene there where a girl, that, a woman that he tried to pick up in episode one happens to work for the feds. I think she's an FBI agent or something. And she comes to visit him because now she finds out who he is because they're keeping tabs on him, right? Through, this, through the system, she finds out who he is and uh, she goes to him and she says, look, I got to let you know I work for the government. And she asks him about his daughter, Tina. And um, Stallone tells her, well, I haven't seen her in 18 years. I haven't seen anybody in my family in 18 years because it was too painful for her to come and see me and visit me in prison. He tells her that. And um, she doesn't see him again. She says, you know, if you get in trouble here, I'm not going to be able to help you. And he says, I understand that. Basically, I'm not asking for your help. And then we move to the end of, the, uh, of this episode, and we see Stallone looking at a, a building. It's in the evening, and he kind of tears up. And he said, you know, I said I didn't want to visit anymore because it was too painful for her to see me. But in reality, no, it was too painful for me to see her, his daughter. And he got choked up. And that got to me a little bit, too, because, you know, look, I did my eight years, and uh, it was extremely painful every time my wife and children came to visit when they left. You know, you saw mood changes in a lot of guys after they left the visiting room and, uh, you know, had to say goodbye to their families. It's tough, you know? And, you know, one of the things I've said all the time, and I say it now and I believe it, you don't have to punish guys in prison. The punishment is being in prison. And I don't care if you even committed the crime, you're still a human being, and when you're in there, you're going through the punishment. And part of the punishment is being away from the people that you love. That's the entire punishment. We can deal with all the other stuff. It's not pleasant, of course. You're in solitary. You've got to deal with all the nonsense and junk that you've got to deal with on a daily basis. But we're men. We deal with it. At least most of us can. But really, it's, it's the family, you know, being away from them, visiting them, having them leave. It's so, so tough. And so you see that starting to... Uh, you know, to come into play here. And I think that's going to be a major part. And then the, the heartbreaking thing, he makes a phone call, okay, to her. And her husband answers the phone that he didn't even know she was married, it seemed. He says, who is this? And he says, it's, it's you know, her husband. And he hears kids in the background. He's got grandchildren. He didn't even know that. And then uh, she refuses to get on the phone with him. And he says, I just want to hear her voice. So she gets on the phone, and she was very stern, very cold, and she said, you wanted to hear my voice? Well, now you hear it. And then she hangs up on him. And that's how the episode ended. And, man, it, it got to me because, look, you know, I mean, I, I, I try to, you know, be as honest as I can with you. I mean, I have two daughters, you know, from my first marriage, and the relationship is not wonderful, and it hurts that I don't have that kind of relationship with, him, with them that I have with my, my other five children. And uh, so I'm starting to feel for Stallone right now, and uh, it's getting to me. So what am I saying? It's getting better, people. I kind of downplayed it a little bit in episode one, but here it is, totally fictional story, something that would probably never really realistically happen, and things in there that aren't realistic. But you know what? It's entertainment, and it's becoming very entertaining to me. The plot is starting to thick. So what do I tell you? Watch the show, okay? Watch it. I'm not trying to turn you off on it. I'm just giving you my perspective. So let's get to episode, episode three next week, and we'll continue this. It's a good one. And uh, that's it for today. So how do I always leave you? Same way. Be safe. And, man, I mean that. I hate reading the New York Post every morning because everybody's getting hurt all the time in the city, the city I grew up in. I hate reading about it and hearing about it. Be safe. 
Be healthy, of course. Yes, I told you last time, no steroids, no junk in my body. I just do the work. Be safe. Be healthy. God bless every one of you throughout this holiday season. And yes, I'll see you next time. Take care.